where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. This is The Brian Snow Show. The Brian Snow Show is back, and we thank y'all for joining us. And I changed the show a little bit because I want to interview guests from all over the world. And in case you don't know the tagline, where sports is the base, life and fun are the result. Here's the life I'm going to tell you about, because I had a chance to chat with my guest before we came on the air today. She is located in Utah where the Delta Center reigns, okay? Not the Vimit Sports Arena, not the Vimit Smart Home Arena. Nah, it's the Delta Center. It's the house that Carl Malone and John Stockton built that came after the Salt Palace, which held a little over 12,000 people. But the fun thing about my guest coming up, in three words, rags to riches. And I'm writing a story like that myself. Let me stop wasting time and through the Invader Coffee guest line, I want to welcome Sharice Walker. She joins me right now from Utah. How are you, my dear? Thanks to, thanks for coming on. Well, thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing great. I Good. love your story about rags to riches because after beating cancer and wow. surviving blood clots and a foot and a toe amputation, I'm writing the same kind of story myself. And when someone invented the phrase, the struggle is real, the struggle is very real. It's so true. And a lot of people don't know. Tell me, tell me parts of your story. How did, what turned the light on for you to say, you know what, I can climb out of this hole and write my own ending. What was the moment that did it for you? Oh, the moment was my kids, I think, because, um, I'm pretty determined and the fact that what happened to us happened um i wasn't gonna let my kids sit there and use that as an excuse and so i wanted to be an example for them to say you know you could be at your lowest of lows but let's get you out and so i wanted them to see it and so now you know we've gone from a kid who every single time we said hey let's go to the store mom i don't want you to spend any money mom i don't want you to do this mom we can't we can't to he's a little spoiled so we're working on that because you know, he's graduating in a couple of months and I'm like, whoa, what happened to that kid that felt bad about spending money? Right. So <laughs> it definitely was my kids. <laughs> For me, it was beating cancer. Hmm. It was beating stage four pancreatic cancer. Oh and Duke University Hospital told my wife to go home because we drove down to North Carolina Duke University looked my wife in the eyes and said, go home and get your affairs in order, that there was mm -hmm. nothing they could do for the tumor they had on the left side of my abdomen. We get up here, and she gets insurance. She starts working. I'm on her insurance. I get it introduced to my oncologist, Dr. Rockinoff, and a shout out to him for mm -hmm. doing this. He made a phone call to uh, his mentor, Attila Nakib, who is now in Boston, and the killing Natib looked me in the eye and said, we'll get this thing. Wow, that's fantastic. Congratulations. And, they, and they, they got it. It took a little longer uh, than normal for me to recover. Mm -hmm. In fact, in many ways, I still am building up my stamina. But that was the moment for me that I decided to write my, write my own story. Mm -hmm. And when you were writing your own story, and I know you know this because you, you've been there in many ways still there. When okay. you were writing your own story, you are going to face a lot of opposition from people who think they know what's best for you. Am, am I wrong? Oh, no, totally. Completely true. <laughs> you get, I'll use the air quotes again, advice. <laughs> <laughs> that <Yes>. they, <laughs> am I wrong mm -hmm. that they that they want you to take and to use but then your brain goes what if this goes wrong what if that goes wrong mm -hmm. you know what's good for others and I was taught this by my dad and I hear my dad's voice in my head every day man what's good for them is not good for you right yeah 
Uh, so it's unfortunate that, you know, you talk about some of the advice it comes from those loved ones that you, you know, want the belief. And I can't tell you how many times and I have had to work through that because the loved ones are the ones that I have to ignore and actually overcome. And so for me, it, it really was by myself with my husband and my husband's just like, I don't know what to do, you know, do it. And so I felt completely obligated because it was my family and my best friend that actually put us in the hole. And so I felt like I needed to just go out there and blow out the water because my husband and I had just gotten married. Like it was my, our second marriage mm -hmm. and you know the su success rate for second marriages. And so it's like, okay, I'm not going to be divorced again. And so um, I had to just like intuition. And when you talk about writing your own story, I literally, my book is coming out next month about, you know, my story. And so I want an autographed copy of that book. Okay. Sounds good. So I, I can so I can show it off to my audience. Absolutely. All right. Mm -hmm. Because people don't believe in my shows taking mm -hmm. off. I'm gonna have three of them and I wanna help uh promote you and your podcast wherever you, wherever you go. So I'm I want first dibs on a signed copy of that book so I can show you off. You got it. I need your address and I will send it to you. Um, it's exciting. It's been a long two year journey, but, um, I think and even that an example, cause I'm like, Oh, I was talking to a loved one. I won't name yeah. names. And I just oh, said, yeah. Oh my gosh, I, I feel like I've rewritten this 20 times. I'm just so tired of it. And mm -hmm. their response, um, was I would have just given up by now. And I know that, I mean, it's two years of my emotional anxiety and like all this blood, sweat and tears and hours and hours and lost income because I've been focused on this instead of my career. Yep. And yeah, I'm like, I'm not going to give up now, you know, but again, that's because what I found is when people give you advice, they are living through their own life of regret and they yeah. don't see you succeed because if they do, that means that they have to admit that it's their effort that is holding them back. Exactly. So that one is one more jet propulsion where I'm like, you know, pushing myself forward just to prove I'm wrong. And so, yeah, advice. No, listen to your own intuition. <laughs> one of my own intuitions was to tell my story and get it out there, mm -hmm. but didn't know how. Right. I had a podcast called Snowman Unfiltered for a while, but it disintegrated and there was no structure to it. But then a friend of mine gave me. This title right here, Diary of a Mad Snowman. I love it. I got it. a few episodes out on YouTube, and the reception has been completely awesome. Mm -hmm. I got a friend at home in Chicago that really wants to uh, strategize and put some better functionality to it. I got another friend that's going to do the opening and the closing. And the next thing I know with some of the comments I've gotten, it's a, it, it's about to take off. That's great. Oh, so you're right. You got to go, you mm -hmm. got to go with your heart. Yeah. And I've learned this the hard way through <laughs> so the years hard. of, through the years of my first marriage, mm -hmm. through the years of me being married to Jody right now, because there are a bunch of people against us, even right. though they say that they loved us. Here we go with the loved ones again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but Jody looked me in the eye and said, I want you to chase your dreams. Oh, and wow. that mm -hmm. for me was it. Right. I wasn't going to let anything stop me. Hell, cancer didn't stop me and it was supposed wow. to take me out. Yeah. It was, it, it was supposed to take me out. Now, you have to tell me this is one of the greatest podcast titles I've ever read when I read your bio <laughs> Unbreakable Mompreneurs. Yes, folks, you got to get this one. Tell everybody about that podcast. So it, there's a history behind it. So I started teaching college at 22 and they were predominantly guys. Right. So I'm this 22 year old, much younger, much lighter in terms of poundage and um, not six kids under my belly. And so because of that, I w looked a little different. I'm happy how I looked. And um I watched those guys because I taught like it was a vocational school. They were there for the hard stuff. They weren't there for the fluff stuff. And I taught the fluff and to see their 
to see how when they first came in, St. Sherry said, I was told I'll never amount to anything. I'm the first person in my family ever to go to college, you know, and to watch them as I taught them for two to four years, walk across that graduation stage with comp like complete confidence. And they're just proud of themselves. Like to this day, it makes me cry. And so then I go through a divorce and then, you know, we go through this huge hole financially that we're in. And we mm -hmm. pull ourselves out. And I go from a W-2 job where discrimination is real. Oh, boy, <laughs> is it ever. Yes. I'm um, going to share a few stories about that just from living in North Carolina. But go yeah, on. Okay. Please go on. So I realized because of that, um, like for the first time in my life, I was let go. And I was doing better. My school was doing better because I used to run colleges. And so... Mm -hmm. I even opened one and that school was doing better than my bosses, but because the CEO's best friend lived in Florida and he needed to move out here to Utah. And so he needed a job. All of a mm. sudden my job was no longer my life. You know, I was let go. So going from getting that school accredited to two weeks later, them letting me go because they waited till I got all the hard stuff done. Mm -hmm. And I realized, okay, I'm never going to work with, for somebody ever again. And so then I went through a divorce about actually that same time. And because of that, it was like, you know what, this isn't okay. And I realized that I had been living my life because the first husband I was with, I had to support my kids. I had to do all this stuff. So I, I, you know, I did straight and narrow. I did everything I was supposed to the way I was taught. And when I divorced, took a step back, was out of a job. I'm like, okay, wait a second. I can write my own story. And so got into real estate, got into, you know, several other businesses and realized that I was making way more money and I had my own future. So because of that, I was on this mission to help people realize, specifically moms, that they can accomplish anything that they want. You know, I've been through that divorce and I had to support all four of my kids without my, like to this day, the ex lives at home with his parents and has never bought a car, never paid a phone bill, never paid, like you name it, that's it. And we're friends. And but, you know, it, no. And so because of that, I want to help women. Um, and let's be honest, guys, too, because I'm not that type of person. But Unbreaking yeah. Entrepreneurs is about moms who are sitting at home, really not happy with their lives. They have this dream, but they're afraid to live their dream because they don't, they feel like they can't. And I'm here to say you can. And so let's talk about business strategies. Let's talk about mom strategies. Let's talk about whatever you want how to juggle being a mom, how to juggle being a business owner, and let's help you be successful and realize your potential. I love it. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to be hooked listening to <laughs> that, to that podcast. Unbreakable Mompreneurs is the title. Where can they find it? Unbreakablemompreneurs.com. So super easy. Man, I just the title alone got me. <laughs> All right. The, ti the, the, the title alone got me. And like I said, I can't wait to uh, take a take a listen to that. Before we came on the air mm -hmm. and you told me where you were and you backed it up and read my mind and said, Utah, I said, home of the Utah Jazz. And before I said anything else, you said, yes, home of the Delta Center. And I go, I'm going, thank you very <laughs> much. Yes, <laughs> because yep. and and yes, we do talk sports on this show, and it backs up to my morning show, Snowman in the Morning. Right. But why don't the fans of today, the NBA fans of today, appreciate the players that we grew up watching? Oh, I don't think they know them. That's the problem. Everyone's so involved with this, right? Every, you know, you're in yeah. your phone all the time. And I think that it's just a different world. Hold on one sec. My heater turned on. Um, because people are so wrapped up in themselves and they're, they don't really know. And because we are so interconnected globally now, like, you know, yeah. everything. And the players, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you think that the fans that don't go to the games all the time, that don't have the season tickets, but just normal people are like, oh yeah, I like the Utah Jazz. It's just a different world. I feel like, it you is. know, the John Stockton, the Carl Malone, um, the Michael Jordan, the Scottie Pippen, you know, yep. you name it. They were just, they were classics. And now mm -hmm. you have these attitudes that 
they want to make a lot of money. It's about money. Yeah. Even, you know, a ticket is $75 now. I remember when it was 10 or 15. Same here. And so Same here. how can you afford to go to these games all the time now? You know, it's so I, money driven. I had a chance to see a games in one of the loudest arena in sports, Chicago Stadium. Yeah. In the height of the Michael Jordan era. Right. Because a bunch of us went to game two. Jealous. Finals in 1991. I didn't have any ears after that game. <laughs> Forget yep. the voice. I didn't have any ears. Yeah, I remember that. And and like I said, it was the height of the Michael Jordan era when he really ascended to the top. Mm -hmm. It's not the same anymore. No. Not as a, especially not as a fan and as a fellow who's covered the NBA for many years as I have. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. It's not fun anymore. Right. It's not. That's, it just doesn't seem like, I mean, that used to be like the culture, like we're going to go to the game or we're going to go do this. And we used to look forward to things. Now, I don't even feel like the players try to associate with the fans as much as they used to. Right. I don't think so either. Just a different attitude kind of goes in line with. Very few players today um, try to align with the fans, the ones that really, really, really cheer them on. Sharice Walker joining me here on the program. You got to tell me about this. Flipping the <laughs> iceberg. Yeah. These titles I love. Okay. <laughs> I love these. I love these titles. All right. Flipping the iceberg. Mm -hmm. What prompted that title right there? What prompted flipping the iceberg? So I, again, goes back to teaching. I used to teach a class called social stratification, chapter seven of my sociology class. And it, mm -hmm. I talked about the Titanic and um, you had the iceberg that, you know, they didn't see the iceberg and it took down the unsinkable ship. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting in my kitchen one day cutting carrots, I remember, and my daughter just flies in. She's like, mom, I'm so tired of this. I can't believe he stood me up again. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and she started to talk about her dad. And in the book, it doesn't admit that, but I'll out it to you. And it, like in the book, all the stories are changing of names and changing of people. But this particular one, she's talking about her dad. And she was saying, I'm so tired of it. Like everybody thinks he's Mr. Wonderful. And yet he lets me down every single time. And so mm -hmm. I said, well, sweetie, it's kind of like an iceberg. You see 10% above the water, 90% below. And she's like, it's just not fair. And so when I divorced my husband, um, everyone, not everyone, but a majority, even my grandma, she's like, I can't believe you're letting him go, you know, and all these things. And I'm like, you don't live with him behind closed doors. And like I said, he's a great person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we all have our demons. We all have the things that we are, have to deal with. And so because yep. of that, I realized that I had trauma in my life. And I think we all do. Mm -hmm. And that trauma affected my relationship and I didn't realize it until it was too late. So that's the first issue is that we have to uncover our trauma, flip it so that you know what it is because you might not be aware. And then the second thing is you need to now know who you're marrying because they change, <laughs> but I don't think they do. I think that you're blinded. And so if you flip the iceberg now, there's a, like I have a workbook that goes with it and it's a series of questions so that you can literally work through yourself and then work through with your mate before you say I do. Those are the two secrets. You have to deal with it. So you flip the iceberg to uncover as much as you possibly can so you know what the heck you're doing and the decision making before you say I do. That is so true. And that was the one thing that I had <laughs> that I did with Jody because mm -hmm. we have both been through depression. Yeah. And anxiety and prior marriage. The only request Jody made of me was for me to get um, was for me to see a professional with okay. all the trauma I've been through, losing my dad, losing my yeah. my baby girl, Donna, at age oh two. Oh, my gosh. I'm the sorry. Abusive, the abusive relation, the abusive relationship that I went through, some of the people that I've had in my life that mm -hmm. one and you've been here, you, you've been where I'm about to take you yeah. one minute. They're your best friend. The next minute, they're stabbing you in the back with a knife. Oh, so many times. Yes. Yeah. And that's what I realized with my first is it, sixth grade, right? When I went out on the recess to ask some girls to play and they like laughed at me and said no. From that point forward, I don't remember having really close friends. Um, 
And how sad is that? That sixth grade, but it's that you start to not trust people. And so that's something I've worked really hard to, to work through and mm -hmm. life is good now, but you know, life is good. And I think that that's my mission is that I just want people to find their peace and their happiness so that they can find their confidence and move forward. And so that's what the, the podcast is about. That's what the book is about. You know, that's what my mission about real estate investing is about. And so people just need, it's like, don't use excuses, just confront your iceberg and move forward. Tell me about the show, The American Dream. Oh, I have yeah. to hear. I, I have to hear about you do it. You do it all. That's one of the reasons mm -hmm. I wanted you on the on the program, mm -hmm. because I love the story that you're writing and I'm in the process of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I've had people tell me you're too old to to dream the way to dream the way you're dreaming. Are you kidding? I've just gotten <laughs> started. And I think for you, correct me if I'm wrong, but like you were at the brink of death. Like mm -hmm. you were on that door. To, to, they were knocking and to really, oh, yeah. You Loud. Were given, yeah, you were given a gift. Um, I'm sure you're living life to the fullest. And I think for me, um, the American dream is an Emmy nominated TV show that has been around for several years, but they came into Salt Lake a couple years ago, but I don't know exactly the history of it. They just started again about a month and a half ago. And so I'm one of a handful of real estate agents who talk about our community. So we highlight, that's what I like about this show is that it's like 80% culture, 20% real estate. And so we talk about, yeah, I'll take you on a listing tour, um, but let's talk about spotlighting different businesses. And so like this little, you know, everything is now box stores and chain stores. And so I, I highlighted this little movie theater. It's a family run business. The history of it, it's been 80 years in the making and they it's been family run for 80 years. And so I had the opportunity to highlight them and talk to talk with them. And so it will be aired across the U S it's on Tubi, Amazon prime, uh, YouTube. Um, and now we're on HGTV TV. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just get to highlight people in our community. I love it. I love it. I love talking with, people with positive attitude. That's what this show is about. And my dear, you and your family have a wonderful, wonderful story. And I can't wait to spread the word about this. Sharice Walker joining me here on the program. Un uh, man, Unbreakable Mompreneurs is the podcast that you need to check out. UnbreakableMompreneurs.com is the website that you need to check it out. And y'all better beat me there because I'm going to be one of the first ones to check it out and download that podcast. Thank you very much, my dear. I really appreciate the time. Thank you for having me. We got more stuff for you on the Brian Snow Show after this. Where sports is the base, life and fun are the results. This is the Brian Snow Show.